history of complaint. This is a case of a 50-year-old male who presents with a history of jaw trauma along with bite changes that began five years ago. He also started noticing wear on his teeth. He currently has headaches and pain behind his eyes. He has been taking anti-inflammatories hoping that it would get better. This patient uh, said that he had a sleep study more than five years ago and said that he was told he has poor sleep hygiene, but there was no mention at that time of any sleep apnea. He had sinus surgery five years ago, which helped with the snoring. He saw an allergist for his present sinus issues and was prescribed a nasal spray, which he currently uses. He states that he awakens in the morning with a sore jaw, and he's been under an increase in stress with his job and his personal life in the past two years. He also states he discontinued Paxil one month ago because of increased grinding of his teeth. History of present illness. The onset. So five years ago, he started noticing the bite changes. The pain started 12 months ago and has become progressively worse. The location of the pain is bilateral TMJ pain, more on the left side. The quality is dull or tension pain. The frequency is continuous. The attack duration is continuous as well. The severity of this pain is moderate pain. Factors that make it better, when he wiggles his jaw and it pops, it feels a little bit better in the jaw. What makes it worse is clenching and chewing. With regard to his headache history, the onset was six months ago. The location is occipital frontal around the eyes. It's a dull pressure type quality of pain. It's continuous. The severity of the pain is moderate. Factors that make it better are his Zyrtec. And what makes it worse, he's not sure. His medical history is positive for hypertension, gout, sinus problems, pneumonia, anxiety, GERD, hiatal hernia, insomnia, tinnitus, heartburn, tremor on the left side, ADHD, and history of taking Ritalin. His current medications are Tricor, Benzaprine, Ambien, Paxil, which he actually stopped the Paxil one month ago. He had sinus surgery five years ago. His sleep history is positive for poor sleep hygiene, and he scored a 9 on the Epworth sleepness test. Family history of Parkinson's and hypertension. For the social history, he is a farmer. He does admit holding tension in his neck, and he believes he's frequently stressed out. Extra oral exam. When palpating the craniofacial muscles, this patient had right masseter pain of moderate intensity, left masseter pain with severe intensity, right anterior temporalis moderate intensity, left anterior temporalis severe intensity, left temporalis tendon was severe, right SCM was mild, left SCM was moderate, right trapezius was moderate and had referral to a shoulder and occipital area. The left trapezius was moderate, and the right frontalis was severe above the eyebrow. We then palpated the temporal mandibular joint, and this patient had moderate pain on the right dorsal condyle and severe pain on the left dorsal condyle. When looking at the max pain-free open, the patient was able to open to 50 millimeters, which is normal. Right left lateral max was 10 plus millimeters, which is also normal. No overbite and no overjet. He was end on. The right side of his joint when listening with the stethoscope had crepitation. Intraoral exam. 
He had light opposing contact on teeth number 6 through 11, acid chemical erosion on the linguals of teeth number 6 through 11, and on the occlusals of all of the second molars. He was in a class 3 relationship with edge to edge resulting in incisal chipping on teeth numbers 8 and 9. There was a lingual tori present which is a variation of normal and the exam of the salivary function was normal as well. We did take a panoramic x-ray and in this panoramic x-ray everything looked within normal limits. For this case, I diagnosed myofascial pain, temporomandibular joint arthritis in the right joint due to the crepitation that was able to be heard with the stethoscope, and capsulitis on the left joint, which had pain to palpation but no crepitation noises detected. I also diagnosed tension type headache and sleep disturbance, which was previously diagnosed. For my treatment plan, myofascial protocol with avoidance therapy and rest and end stretch. I prescribed Voltaren gel 1%, 100 grams applied to the TMJs four times a day, a referral for physical therapy a referral to the ENT to evaluate the sinuses, referral to psychologists for stress management. I like to call the PCP to discuss changes in the antidepressant or possibly adding boost bar to this patient's medication. Possible future NICARD, possible future TMJ MRI or cone beam CT, possible future steroid injection, Heilgen injection, or arthrocentesis. And I'd like to also have a current evaluation uh, for possible sleep disorder. A referral to orthodontist for orthodontic evaluation since patient is concerned with the chipping of the maxillary incisor teeth which are end on. So for medications, Voltaren gel 1%, 100 grams applied to the TMJs four times per day. As you remember, this patient had GERD, so it is important to try to avoid the systemic NSAIDs if possible. My follow-up plan will be to evaluate the patient in two weeks to see if there is any adequate pain reduction with the topical and with the myofascial protocol that we gave the patient as well as the referral to the physical therapist and stress management, etc. Discuss possible change in antidepressant with this PCP, as I mentioned in the treatment plan, because Paxil was causing increased bruxism, so he stopped taking it without informing his primary care physician. It may be more advantageous for him to be taking a TCA or an SNRI or like I mentioned, adding boost bar to the Paxil. What is bruxism? Bruxism is the involuntary or habitual grinding or clenching of the teeth, typically during sleep. However, in the daytime, if we're clenching our teeth, it's usually habitual. Whereas while we're sleeping, it's usually involuntary. Well, what does the research say on bruxism with SSRI use? So there was a report by Patel and company that addressed this issue. The focus of the report was on bruxism related to antidepressant medications, specifically serotonin reuptake inhibitors and serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. The American Academy of Sleep Medicine describes sleep bruxism as an oral activity characterized by grinding or clenching of the teeth during sleep, usually associated with sleep arousals. Sleep bruxism can occur secondary to certain medications, certain conditions, medical conditions, and the use of illicit 
drugs as well. SSRI-induced bruxism is thought to be a form of akathisia, that is, a motor restlessness commonly caused by antipsychotic and antidepressant therapy in the jaws. This decrease in dopamine causes disin disinhibition, which appears to allow for repetitive muscle activity. Medications reported to be effective for short-term management of SSRI-induced uh, bruxism include buspirone, as we mentioned, gabapentin, propanolol, lomotrigin, and diazepin. Many patients exhibit signs and symptoms of sleep bruxism, and this can be an important contributor to myofascial pain. However, the relationship between sleep bruxism and myofascial pain is controversial. Thank you. After speaking to the patient on the phone, he's doing 100% better. He feels that the physical therapy and stress management have been the most helpful. And the patient continues stress management therapy, physical therapy, and to keep follow-up appointments to evaluate the Voltaren gel.